Mike Sheridan here. In today's video, I'm going to show you a simple workout you can do at home or in the gym. All you need is 12 minutes, a little bit of intensity, and a kettlebell. The type of workout we'll be doing today is called the high intensity interval training workout, which basically means we'll be doing a brief work period that's highly intense, followed by a brief rest period, and then moving back to that work period again. The benefit with this high intensity interval training is we're getting sort of that cardio day or that cardiorespiratory benefit without actually doing traditional cardio and without having to deal with the negatives that come with traditional cardio. I'm not going to get into those today. If you'd like to learn more about that, you can check out my book, Eat, Meat, and Stop Jogging, or the various articles I have online regarding those negatives. But for today, we'll just stick to the high intensity interval training, which as I said, you're going to get all the benefits that come with that one hour jog around the block, the running on the treadmill, the running on the elliptical, the spending hours on the bike. You don't need to do any of that. You don't need to spend time doing that. You can get all those benefits with these short bursts of highly intense exercise. So for today's workout, I'm going to flash that up on the screen. You can either work your way through all four exercises in a row, or as I prefer, I like to pair exercises together. So the way that I'll show it to you today is going from A1 to A2, back and forth. You're working for 30 seconds you're resting for 30 seconds, you're working for 30 seconds. If you'd like to play with the rest periods there, you can. I am also a fan of a 15 second rest period followed by exercise number two, and then a 45 second before going back to exercise one, whatever sort of floats your boat there. Um, and like I said, you could do all four as well, which is basically you do your A1 for 30, rest 30, A2 30, rest 30 and then you'd go to B1 which technically would be A3 and then rest for 30 and then you do your A4 and then back to A1 again. And as you can see the sets here are three so we're doing four exercises for three sets. It's basically kind of a every minute on the minute where you're working for 30, resting for 30 and there you have your 12 minute workout. So the first exercise I'll get into is your A1 exercise which is a clean and press. Anyone familiar with Olympic lifting, you're sort of grabbing the weight from the ground, flipping it up over your shoulder, and then pressing it overhead. It's gonna be the hips that drive through as you pull that weight up. You're gonna to try to lead with the elbow as you pull up, flip the kettlebell over to the back of your wrist, and then press overhead. And since this is for time, this is supposed to be a high intensity interval training session. There's not really a tempo here. It's just whatever you're comfortable with speed wise. If you can go fast, go fast. If you have the experience, you can go fast. If you're new, I'd slow the movements down until you get used to the movements. And you're basically as many reps as you can. So you're moving from your right arm to your left arm and just keep going for time, trying to do it with good form, not get too sloppy. Once you're done that, you can either do the 15 second rest, like I said, or you can do the full 30. Exercise number two, after you've had your rest period, is the kettlebell swing. So this is pretty straightforward for anyone that's done uh, this type of exercise before. Basically, we're doing a hip hinge followed by a hip thrust, and Unfortunately online you're going to see a lot of people bringing that kettlebell way up over their head. I know crossfitters like to do this for some reason. But if, uh, if you're doing the kettlebell swing properly, the kettlebell should really only go as high as your momentum takes you. So, I mean, I don't know who thrusts their hips so hard that the kettlebell goes over their head. But what I'm doing here, as you can see, is just thrusting to the point Sometimes the kettlebell doesn't even make it to 90 degrees. The point of the exercise is the thrust, not how high you bring the kettlebell. So you're bringing that right down. You're pushing the butt back as you lower. You're trying to maintain a neutral spine or an arched back. And then you're firing those hips through and you're using your momentum to swing you back, using your momentum to swing you forward. Ideally, you don't want to shoot the hips too far here. You want to get them back to standing 
and ideally you're giving yourself a glute squeeze at the top. So that's exercise two. Like I said at the start, you can then go 45 seconds and back to exercise one, or if you're doing the 30, 30, then you can do 30 and then go back to one. So if you're doing the A1, A2, B1, B2 scenario, you're gonna go back and forth between these three times, either with the 30 second, 30 second, or the 15, 45. And then once you're done that, or if you're doing the circuit, you can move on to exercise three. Exercise three is the back lunge or forward lunge. So I've given you two options here. In both scenarios, you're holding the kettlebell on the outside handles. You could call this a goblet grip for anyone that's familiar with that. Anyone who does goblet squats, this is the goblet grip. And basically you're trying to keep your elbows up and you're keeping that weight up high, sort of at your chin. When you, once you got that figured out, you basically do a back lunge, trying to get at least a 90 degree situation going on with your knees. You're lunging back, coming back to standing, lunging back, coming back to standing. And there's no tempo here, so rip out as many reps as you can. If you're feeling confident or if you have the experience, I'd recommend the forward lunge or the drop lunge. And basically on this one, what you want to try to do is once you take your step, is to think about using the heel to drive back to standing. So in order to properly recruit the muscles that we're going for here, your glutes, your hamstrings, you want to try to drive off the heel, not the toe, and you'll get a lot more power off that heel. So just be conscious of the heel if you're doing the forward lunge, and then obviously if you're doing the back lunge, you're going back to your toe. Exercise four is one of my favorites. It's a burpee variation. So basically you're picking up the kettlebell off the ground like a deadlift situation. And then you're setting it back down and doing, a, I guess this would be classified as a modified burpee because you're not doing the push up, but you're basically jumping the feet, putting the hands down beside the kettlebell, jumping the feet back and then jumping back to outside the kettlebell again and standing up. I actually use this same exercise at the end of my other kettlebell workout, which is more of a strength workout. And one of the important things here is to reset when you jump those feet back. We don't want to get into this ugly situation where you're, you're just sloppily picking up the kettlebell and having a super round and back and you end up tweaking your back because you're already exhausted at this point in the, in the workout and you're just you know, you're setting yourself up for injury. So when, when you jump the feet back, you want to reset. And usually that requires putting the chest up, putting the head up and dropping the butt down and trying to get yourself into an arched situation. So if you can do that reset every time, you're going to be fine. We are going for speed here, but we're not sacrificing form in order to get that speed. Two other things I want to mention before I let you go. The first one is Consider your training level before trying this workout. I wouldn't recommend it for someone that hasn't done body weight, high intensity interval training, and or hasn't lifted weights. So if you don't check those two boxes, I'd maybe uh, consider not doing this or doing it a little slower than highly intense with a really light weight. The second thing I wanna mention is that you should do some type of warm up before doing this workout. So I know I mentioned you only need 12 minutes, but Technically with a warm up, you probably need 20 minutes. If you have a go-to warm up that you like to do, go ahead and do that. If you need a little guidance in that department, I do have a dynamic warm up on YouTube that you can check out. I'll link that in the description as well with some of the other resources I mentioned at the start. And you can check out my book, which is free to understand some of the negatives surrounding your traditional steady state cardio and the hamster wheel that people find themselves in trying to burn more calories and eat less calories and all that fun stuff. So check those out. I hope you like today's workout. Thanks for watching.